got comments. I yeah. Comments, timestamp for Jacob, and all of the behind the scenes emails and messages that come my way. Which there are many. Sneaks up on me when I uh, when I do it this way. Okay, so hi everybody. I don't know where I'm looking. What's the matter? Yes, it is Shark Week. That's why we're doing Hammer Time tonight. We're going to get our Hammer Time on. Michael Lassiter. Don't mind me. I'm just going to fix a... Uh, I bet they can hear me good now. How about now? Test, oh, yeah, test. yeah. You're back up. Okay. Sound just went out. Uh, that was no me. Sound. I was. Sound's gone. No sound. But now the sound is back. No audio. Jacob? It's back. We're getting levels right there. Okay. Thank okay. You. Well, there we go. Back that's on. fine. There we go. Okay. Yeah. We have sound. Sound's back. Hey. Yes. Sorry, I hit a mute button that I did not know existed. Now that I know it exists, I will only hit it. If I stub my toe or something, which makes me speak in a unstilt beast like fashion. What camera are you using now as I stand in a place you never thought I would stand, Jacob? The room cam is just a little bit below your neck. Okay. Thought I would throw him a curveball. Uh, this is a camera setup we started to try a month ago, and um, turns out Jacob is a binge drinker, and he just he was out of contact for a whole month, and you know what do I know? So left YouTube Wednesday video. We got it back. Oh, you like the YouTube Wednesday video? Cool. It was uh, obviously something I had to do for my shop. I get a lot of questions about my air system, so I thought it was uh, good to do it. Are you duct taping a camera up? I'm duct taping a microphone. We have a conference room microphone up in the ceiling. Lumra is watching you. Yes, he is. Are you sure OSHA would not approve of that stool letter? Well, OSHA checks my stool. Didn't even have to finish that. That's terrible. We support air systems and make stuff. We can't the EDI brat said, hey kid. We're gonna make some stuff. Hello! Stuff. Hey folks, Ezekiel. Hey Ezekiel. That is a massive mask. 
Uh, it really is. Uh, I'll put it on here in a minute. Uh, I want to get all this flash trimmed off of it. And then we're going to Dremel it. I'm sure that'll be a microphone delight. Stan is working on Mumra's helmet today, right now. That's right. Getting that knocked out. We've got all the 80s up in here. We've got Street Sharks, we got Mumra. Currently I'm trimming the flash off of this. Flash is what happens when the two halves of the mold meet up. And uh, you know, a little bit of latex gets in between them. Yay, thank you. Yeah, you guys don't get as much Stan as you do, uh, I guess, Stacy. The world needs more Stan. The world needs more Stan. That's right. Jacob, you might have to help me with moving cameras or whatever if we need a better view. Because I really can't see what's happening too much unless we're on my phone cam. Jesse Papa Bear says, I like the mic. You can hear everyone in the room. Awesome. Are you going to make a master for Hammer Time? Uh, probably not. Uh, since I have not yet sold one, I, uh, <laughs> I probably don't need to make a, uh, a master to make many, many copies. I want to see how you do the two snakes on the helmet. Oh, well, um, it's all EVA foam, and we will show it here in a bit. How oh, do you can show them those? Yeah. Reese Aaron says, good evening. So these are our uh, two snakes. These are EVA foam, and uh, drew up a pattern on the computer, and uh, put some scales on it, and this is going to be uh, Kind of a reminder where the eyes are. If we're going to put something else there, we know exactly where they go. And they, uh, you'll see them in a little while, but it sits sort of Conan style on the, on the top. Huzzah. Lisa, hi. Lisa says, good evening. And here, all of my family was ready to come on a boat for Hepteron gloves for Wednesday bingo. I guess it's hammer time night instead. It is hammer time night. Um, you know what? It's Wednesday, isn't it? I forgot it was Wednesday. Um, I feel like now I should be sculpting something. Is it? It's Shark Week, isn't it? It is Shark Week. So, so go ahead, guys. Let's vote. Do you want me to sculpt something new? Uh, I did get Whiplash out of the way. Whiplash is done, and I'm very happy with how he turns out. Very cool. Um, so, if you guys want to see something new sculpted. Let me know, or if you'd rather see me work on Hammer Time. I forgot it was Wednesday. This is how my life goes now. Sculpt something new, Hammer Time. Wife, you'll kind of have to Go keep with the Shark camp. Week. New sculpt. Seriously, my husband actually got a YouTube account to vote. Says so please. Yay! <laughs> You're trying to skew the numbers. Alan, do whatever you had on your list to do. New, Shark Week, the Master's Call, the Baker's Call, Sculpt. Hammer is fine. New stuff, you choose. New stuff. I found you due to the awesome Cocoa Vid Gentleman's Panel, and I kept coming back due to how cool everyone is. I vote go nuts. Uh, we have a whole... Uh, we have a good community here. We have a good community here at, at Still Beast for live feeds. Uh, I would like yeah. to see you sculpt go crazy. Uh, I want to see paint on Hammer Time. Larry says, Cujo we. I like teeth face, but Hammer Time has waited a long time. I think you should do what you want. Teeth face. I'd love to see a new sculpt, but I bow to the masters. All right, so you know what it would be? It would be sculpt teeth face or work on hammer time. And Stan, are you hanging out? Yep. 
Because currently you're waiting on this on that to dry, right? I'm waiting on this to dry. And that'll be a good 30 minutes. Probably. Why don't you take the felt buffing wheel and buff out the seam line right. on hammer time? I'll give this to you. Uh, you can probably clear space over here, Stan. All right, all right. And then you can uh, dremel that seam. Okay. And I can actually start sculpting toothpaste because you can then go black that out. Right? Oh yeah. And then when that's ready to go, then I'll be able to uh, paint. paint hammer time. And I'll have this halfway started. The, uh, this sculpt uh, toothpaste is not going to be a super difficult tool, I'm afraid. Is toothpaste a master of the universe? No, toothpaste is a order for uh, from a LARPing group that has a special type of character that um, has this ring of teeth for their face. What about the dive helmet? Uh, the dive helmet is on a bit of hiatus because I don't need it right now. And as soon as I need it, I will kick back up on it. Jacob, would you tell me uh, this little lipstick can is too close, isn't it? Yes. I guess we can go there. tonight simply because my computer is being used up with the uh, software. So probably on a simpler night when it's just me or me and the wife I'll be able to show your pictures. Jordan did a really cool costume that he sent me pictures of. Bet you guys are real happy with that new microphone now that we're dremeling. I feel like you're all at the dentist's office. Is newbie streamer kid ever going to sculpt? Uh, Jacob, you ever know a sculpt? I don't know. Sure. This is a question, <laughs> Jacob. I'm just I, I, I don't know. Jacob, well, have you ever sculpted before? I did in uh, elementary school. I made a really, really good clay pot. You know what? You know what I made in elementary school? What did you make? An ashtray. <laughs> because. The 70s and 80s were a terrible time. And they just, everyone smoked. I love making costumes for people who play a LARP. They come up with some of the neatest ideas. They sure do. Hugo says, excellent close-up image. Well, uh, that might be cool once we're uh, sculpting. The quiet compressor makes a difference. I'm hearing less noise. Well, that's funny because Stan is dremeling like a madman, like right behind me. Yeah, so the, the compressor's not on, but when it is on, I can't even tell. I have to open the door and listen to make sure I turned it on or off. That's the mic. You could well, move to this end of the table. Well, since I got a base this out, I can go do this in the back porch. Uh, you could. Don't, don't, not be comfortable. Oh no, that's fine. Because it's nice out and it's daylight, and I still in all the paints out there. Okay. Jesse Popper said the dremel is a little annoying. It <laughs> is. I, I can imagine. Put stand next to the new compressor. Huh. Sounds like a dentist. <laughs> I know. The Dremel is way louder than the new compressor. Okay, guys, can you hear me better now? Give me a sound check, please. The Dremel is outside. How is your sound now? Shot noise is unpredictable, y'all. Sound check, my darlings. Is that better? Sound? We're getting better. 
bouncing whenever you're talking. Can so. you hear me okay? I just realized how squeaky this door was. So it's too far away. Okay. Did you oh. say here or at the end of this table? Ah, end of that table is fine. Based on either way. Jacob, am I ruining everything? You are not. It looks very good. Okay. I will correct anything that needs to be. You're a stern taskmaster, Jacob. Send it to me. I will dispose of it properly. You know that here in Texas they call meringue calf slobber? Yeah. Calf slobber? Yes. Yeah. Uh, which is probably the grossest thing I think you could call meringue. Okay. I think it was a church function for your family of some kind. Yeah. Where someone asked if I wanted calf slobber on it. Funeral. And I was mortified and disgusted and I just said no thank you. And at the funeral the fa <laughs> they feed the family and there's someone always makes something with meringue. There's fried chicken, there's jalapenos, and there'll be something with meringue. And yes. uh, they probably wanted to know if you wanted meringue on something. You were mortified. I was mortified. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I quietly and politely said no thank you. Welcome to the family. Nerdy McGamer says hello. Connie Pierce says you still sound like you're far away. Okay, I've moved, so hopefully that's she, better. She's just far away. <laughs> Cobwebs. Fish slobber sounds worse. Do, do I sound like I'm far away? Because in all honesty, the shop is so clean and open right now, there is a little bit of an echo. Stacy says, cat slobber. I mean, I'm from here. I've never heard that. Yeah, that's a, it's a, it's a slang for meringue. Loving the multiple cameras. Cool. That is correct, 1980. So there's a lot of German settlers in Texas. I'm a descendant from an old German. Yes, that is correct. We have a lot of German descendants here. Jordan Diesel. If the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland were a zombie, he'd be an amorphous mass of throbbing boils. Hashtag deep thoughts from Um, that's possible. I think I would make him out of like severed arms that were all sewn together. It has to be a little trippy, I think. Will OSB run an extra mic for me? For Shannon? Uh, yeah, they say I'm much better. They say you're not much better? They say I'm better, but a few are saying that I am like. Okay. Yes, because this is, it's not coming from your camera anymore. Because you're right. Here, but it's now all here. Yeah. How, how but that is, is a much better mic. Yeah, I'm asking them to give me a report on how you sound, so do some talk. Yes. Well, oh, I was born at a very young age. Oh, I'm going to sculpt a thing called Toothface, which is um, a monster for a world called Britannus uh, that actually um, a friend of mine used to, uh, he runs it, we used to work together at Scarb Renaissance Festival. They say you sound good. Okay. I am kind of directly under it. You are, and it's, I'm just going to make sure that I, I, I pronounce, I reject. Misty Jezereski says hello. Hello, Misty. 
Connie Pierce says hello and says you sound fine. Alan sounds fine. Shannon sounds a bit far away, but she's on the other side of the room. Actually, I moved cobwebs. I'm a little closer now. So yeah, she's right there. Hopefully, you can you can hear me better. I'm going to do some projecting to the new microphone. We're just gonna with the new computer and new camera setup. We are making some jumps here in our routine. So hopefully. And you may also speak at a frequency that is similar to what the air conditioners run at okay. or the two air purifiers that are running are running. We've got some upgrades in the shop, so you are yeah. learning with us. There are fans going, and one fan is actually really close to the microphone. Sounds great. I don't hear a lot of generator in the background. Wink, wink. Yeah. What's funny is it's on too because I, I have a little leak in my air hose and I hear that leaking. Alan, how was the editing with the new computer? Um, well, what was tough was that they don't make Windows Movie Maker anymore. So I wasn't able to use Movie Maker on the new computer. So uh, there's a new program that I'm using which is Movie, uh, HD Movie Maker Pro, which is not Movie Maker. Uh, it just has a very similar name. It's not even a Microsoft product. Um, and I actually really like it. Um, I really like the uh, voiceover feature, which will help me out uh, doing much faster voiceovers. I was not faster this go round, but I think that's because I didn't know the program. I had to literally figure everything out. Now that I have figured it out, I think I will get faster at editing. And uh, one of the reasons that YouTube Wednesday lagged for so long was that how long it takes to edit. YouTube Wednesday has been a, like an all-day deal. Um, if I start it at 1 p.m., let's say, I'm not going to get it uploaded until 1 a.m. Even if the project takes you know an hour to film, uh, it just takes a long time faster computer, so it uploads faster into the computer from the phone. Um, yeah, it's getting better. I love the air compressor video. Now I don't have to ask how did you set up. I'm just going to copy it. There you go. Yeah. Chad says your voiceover was awesome. I called it your Bob Ross well, that's because my wife was sleeping straight down the hallway, <laughs> and I did not want to wake her up. So my voiceover was me whispering very gently <laughs> so that I did not wake my wife. <laughs> Gray Hawkins says hello. Hello, Gray Hawkins. Today was her first day of school. Oh, oh, great, great. She's at home. Hope it went well. Um. You know, I don't know if I could do homeschool. I, uh, probably not when I was a kid, for sure. I probably do homeschool now. Hey, Madeline. She's sending some friends our way. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Horror Beauty says it takes forever to upload to YouTube. Yes, it does. Um, I, ha I did find with my new setup, it is a little faster but you are limited by your upload speed. Um, I, I think I had a 16 minute video this week and it only took 45 minutes to upload, which is amazing. Uh, normally, it's, it's like an hour and 45 minutes to upload a 20, 20 minute video. Okay, Art Beauty says, I thought Alan was trying to do AMSR. Please, for the love, of all that is holy, don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not, not, not in my plans. <laughs> Although Amber was trying to get me to make AS AMS ASMR videos. ASMR. Yeah. AMSR. A Who knows? Yeah. I don't think you're I think it's ASMR. Asmer. Cobweb says, I'm sending up a 26-minute video. I'll bet it'll take five hours, I guess. Uh, it can, yeah, especially if it's HD. Um, it, it, and, you know, if it's not HD, it just looks terrible on YouTube. Uh, that's, I mean, they're, they're kind of teching 
the quick uploads out. I have a three gallon compressor. It's an oilless, it's rated at 120 PSI, but I can only get about 65 PSI. Do you know any tricks or do I just need to upgrade? Uh, you need to upgrade. If you're not getting compression on your compressor, um, I, it's, 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 is it old? Um, that air pressure is going somewhere. Uh, do you, maybe you also, you might have a faulty uh, valve that isn't reading correctly and you, you think you have it set for 120 and you really have it set for 60. Uh, I have had a valve go bad that did that to me. It wouldn't let me get past 20 PSI. ASMR clay smushing. <laughs> Madeline says, my YouTube is low quick, but maybe my speed I paid for is actually doing Hooray! Car Beauty says no fetish videos. He says it's a fetish thing. ASMR. Is that true? Who knew? I, I don't know. And I don't actually want to know. Fallon says ASMR, you can title almost anything with a natural sound. That isn't very loud, that is. Yeah, that's not good. There's something going on there, Glenn. Hey, Masato. Good to hear from you, sir. Misty Jezereski, my original plan was to homeschool my son. But six months pregnant, hubby totaled his truck and had to buy a new one that wasn't in the budget and septic lines replaced while in labor, not in budget also. Okay. That is understandable. So, so I had to keep working. So, okay. 87 people are watching. Hello, 87 people. I'm going to sculpt a monster that I'm just going to call Toothface. Um, it's, it's kind of a circular ring of teeth, uh, leechy style. Um, and I think that this will be similar-ish to my plant creature that I had done in the past, but I killed that mold. So hopefully, uh, so number one is to get this uh, to the client's specification so that they like the mask. And then my second backseat goal is to get it to where maybe I can use it as a plant creature later. But client happy is number one because through clients, all things are possible. Gappy UK, hey guys, how you all doing? Love the multi-cam tool. Uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate Great. that. We're trying. All of that multi-camera goodness is due to Jacob, who is back there behind me, uh, running mission control. And uh, he's going to get us set up. I like having him around, but I also want to be able to do the multi-cam whenever. Can you see a reference? Um, no, you actually can't. Simply because uh, my computer is busy doing other things. Um, and luckily, this reference is one that I have committed to memory. And the reference that they liked best was actually a mask that, my, that a friend of mine made. Awesome. So I'm familiar. Awesome work, Jacob. Yay, Jacob. Thank you, newbie streamer kid. Thanks, chat. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's Tooth Face, 1986. It's Ruffle Face right now. It does look like a Ruffle's potato. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is, I have a Beast Effects, or oh, probably too close, a Beast no, Effects okay. scraper tool. And uh, this is what I'm using to rake. Um, and I'm getting all of my high areas evened out. I'm getting my low areas filled in. That's why we do all this raking. Um, because only when the sculpture is even can I proceed. Simply because I want things to stay rather proportionate. 
and I want to have good symmetry, and only with a good foundation can I do that. I mean, honestly, this whole foundation process should be about a third of a sculpt. You know, one third foundation and primary forms, one third secondary and tertiary forms, and then uh, one third for skin detailing. And I Hello from Scotland. Hello, Scotland. And I finished with the big T. I'm going to move now to medium T. And I'm going to go the other direction. So I went one way first. And now I go the other way. I go across everything that I've done. Is this mask from a series? Uh, no, no. This is, uh, this is going to be a monster from the imagination of a world designer for LARP. And it, it has similarities to other creatures. It'll look a little leech facey. It'll look a little bit uh, like a plant creature I've done in the past. But again, that mold has been destroyed. So. So, thumbs up with the sounds here. I think they're hearing you well. Good. I'm not known for my subtlety, so. Good. And these guys have hoods that they wear, and the hood comes to like here, and then it'll just be the teeth. And the eyes will probably the eyes will be screened in. And I'm going to switch now to the smallest set of teeth. Look how small those teeth are. And they have a flat edge. But and that will fall off the roof. No, no, no mold has fallen off. Oh, no, I did not throw that mold off the roof in a fit of rage. <laughs> Cobwebs has a habit of throwing things actually onto the roof when uh, he gets frustrated with them. Um, we might be related. And yeah, yeah, that's, that sounds like my wife's doing. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I don't normally do that. Oh, I, I stay pretty it. calm. So if something is frustrating, Cobweb's first suggestion is throw it off the roof. Yeah. <laughs> I think he says Shannon throws things off the roof. Off the roof. Yeah. Yeah. My wife on occasion has some rage issues. <laughs> so if you were married to me, you would on occasion have some rage issues. Realm says hello. Hey, Rose. Gregory Hayes says hello. Lisa says, I thought this was from Channel Zero. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, that is a different type of toothpaste. Yeah, uh, Channel Zero, very innovative monster uh, where if you guys get a chance to look it up, it's, a, it's just covered in teeth. It's like a tooth golem. I love it. Uh, I thought it was very, very original uh, monster. I'd never seen anything like it before. Ezekiel says, Shannon comes in the shop and finds her best knife with plaster on it. Stab, you stab, stab. <laughs> okay, yeah, see, we're getting very smooth now. I worked with a couple that when she broke up with him, she put all of his guns on the roof. She was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Andrew Smith. Hi, Alan. How's the new air compressor? It looks, it looks the business. Uh, it, it's pretty darn good. Um, that that model is actually from a company I think called California Air, but they do business under another brand name when they sell at Harbor Freight, and that is the Fortress Compressors. Uh, they're they're actually they're well made. They're very quiet. They're great compressors. You want the teeth too? Base out or not? Uh, no, don't base out the teeth. Okay. Thank you, sir. Love the cameras. Get a macro and a micro shot of the work. Yeah. How are you doing and what are you making? Right now I'm making a creature called Toothface, which is kind of from a LARP 
Uh, this is for a, a LARPing character, um, for a world or a group called Britannus, I forget which one. Um, I actually really like making stuff for LARP things. Uh, we don't have a lot of LARP happening here in the United States, but um, I, you know, I just I love that it's going to be used, and I love that actors are going to care about it, and actors are going to take what I make into themselves and make it part of their persona, and I, I find that part of the process to be very rewarding for me, the creator. Jacob needs a seat. Standing the whole time can't be good. I am actually going to give Jacob my seat as I take my wheelie chair back. Look at that, Jacob. That was from Jesse Papa Bear, who's looking at me. Thank you, Jesse. I really appreciate it. Ezekiel says, my ex-wife carved a lovely word in the back of one of my high-end guitars. That makes it a collectible. John C. said, can you mix plaster in the ice cream maker? Don't let Shannon find out. Listen. He doesn't want to compromise Do I look like the maker. kind of guy who's going to ruin an ice cream maker? <laughs> I don't think I am. The salad spinner, yes. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll mix it in the salad spinner. That's for sure. so loud that I don't like to use it because I feel it's going to disturb my neighbors. So I tend to use the smaller compressor here inside the shop. Tuckworks says hello. Hey, Tuckworks. says, disclaimer, 1980s use of the word nuts is not a slander on the public dealing with mental illness. Cobwebs, hey newbie streamer kid, hand over to the Mumra right quick. Go ahead. Make the people happy. All right. Just the Jacob is young enough not to know who Mumra is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's exactly old enough to not know what that is. Look, so I'm considerably older than Jacob, and I didn't know who Mumra is. But you are not a young man at that time. That's Here's right. Mumra, everybody. To my knowledge, you've never been a young man. That means that 94 people are trying or watching me try to find the one tool I just had in my hand. Are you using any images for inspiration? Uh, if you want, I can pull up a photo. Right now, no, I'm not. But I will later. Severe is actually an awesome artist, and I like his stuff a lot. He's a fun guy. I enjoy him. <laughs> Michael Lasseter, Jacob, no matter what Alan sends you to the kitchen to go get, don't do it. You will die. That's true. <laughs> to be fair, though, I have a much better shop stock shop now than I did back then. I have access to my own butter knives. Thank you very much. So I am making a little eye socket area that I can put screen in with a little ledge that I can glue it down. I 
was just picturing Mike E. Seaver from Growing Pains. I'm such an 80s kid. Mike Seaver, yeah. Mike Seaver, okay. Her camera. HBK Styles, what's up? I just tuned in. Are you sculpting by memory or are you going off of the photo? Uh, I'm not to the point where I need a photo yet. I will pull up a photo reference here shortly, but I'm just not there yet. <laughs> Big Dog says, Shannon starts looking around for her kitchen stuff. Lion Cook says, hide your good knives. Always hide your good knives. Warmonger, lots of cameras tonight. Need a head-mounted GoPro just to take off before using the bathroom. You know what? I did one video uh, for YouTube Wednesday where I wore a head cam and uh, it made people seasick. It, uh, <laughs> it was bad. So I will never do that again. They, they asked you to redo it. Yeah, they're like, can you make this video again without the nausea? Can I have 45% less nausea, please? So, yeah. Gregory Hayes says, I'm packing for a three week trip to Maine while watching vacation time with the family. Oh, that's awesome. And Maine is beautiful. Maine is beautiful. Maine is beautiful. Uh, it, yeah. Those two corners of the country, Oregon and Maine, I, I think they're just, they're some of the most beautiful land that we have. But I'm an old growth forest kind of guy. Uh, my wife, I think, is a little bit more of a beach person, and I'm a little bit more of a woods and mountain person. I'm, I'm every yeah, yeah, my wife is pretty happy everywhere. And I'm pretty happy at the beach, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, you've been the one craving the but, beach. But, um, yeah. I, I, but, you know, you took me to the Pacific Northwest, and I loved it. Yeah. I love forests in Maryland and everywhere we went. Love the beach, love the mountains. I'm, I'm kind of a nature nut, and my wife is not far behind. Realms, having a tough time with this one. <coughs> Thank you. Rewrite it, please. So all of this is going to be inside of that ring of teeth. So I'm just going to put a couple big circles here so that I can kind of disguise what's happening inside of where the eyes are. Because I've got two circles for the eyes, obviously. If I do two more here, then it just might just be like a feature that uh, I can work into the inner mouth. And that might not make sense right now. It might not ever make sense. Makes sense in my heart. Luke, search your feelings. Okay. Ezekiel said Blair Witch Camel. Shaky Cam. Excellent. John C. says this was a Hollywood movie. 
Devil's Gate on Netflix. It has some very cool creatures in it. The Devil's Gate. Uh, I don't know if I have or not. Um, I don't necessarily remember everything that I watched by title. And sometimes I've got to get like 20 minutes into a movie before I have to remember that I saw it. Um, but I can look it up. Alexa, remind me to watch The Devil's Gate on Netflix tomorrow at 3 p.m. Okay, I'll remind you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Wow. That was nice and loud. <laughs> and oh, you'll that's note, from your yes, Alexa is now on my computer. Oh, and. No, Mama is not a computer. What? You said her name. I did, I did. I said the A name. So. And that A version is dominant to all of the other A versions in the area. Eventually, she's going to tell me that she can't close the pod bay doors. That's how I roll. Stan, is the first thing that you made black today dry? No. Okay. Well, that's fine. Double. Uh, double. KBFX says, hey, sexy. Uh, hey. Hey. Thanks. John C., I loved Maine. I spent three weeks camping and collecting plant fossils. That sounds pretty fantastic. Monterey Bay is beautiful. KBFX. I got the air compressor video saved, and I'm very glad you made a video on it because the shop is in need of a proper compressor. Cool. Uh, you know what? I'm pretty happy with the fortress. It's very quiet, which is, was one of my main uh, reasons for change. Hey, Alan, where did you get the new foam heads in the background to your left? Is that Michael? China, actually. Uh, I ordered them from AliExpress about five months ago. I actually forgot that I ordered them, um, and they were $7 a piece, so it wasn't even a huge savings. So, uh, one star, do not recommend. Ezekiel says, next trip I want to go gator hunting in the swamps of Louisiana. KBFX, have you seen the crazy videos about what happens when you ask A-L-E-X-A -E to give you the daily five nine? No, I haven't. Bill Schaefer, I have to leave for a while to do family stuff. I hope you make it back. I hope you make it back too, Bill. It's not okay. I have the large fortress, and I feel like I want the small, quiet one for airbrushing. Yeah, the uh, the big one looks nice, um, and but I want... I wanted quiet. That was my main thing, you know. Realm says, I thought you were upset with something I said. I hope that you're not. No, Realms, I will tell you. Uh, every now and then I'll say, hey, person, you're being a jerk. I don't think you've said that to Realms. I have not said that to Realms. Michelle, I ordered two dozen from them to, and had to get a refund. They couldn't the order of the headquarters? Yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a lot changed when COVID hit. Uh, they, it hit them before it hit us, and that has affected international shipping for, you know, six, eight months. 1980, I was waiting on the Mississippi to go below 10 feet, so the sandbar, I searched for relics and fossils, would be up. We just got another 10 inches this week, so that's a no-go for another week. Boy, send it here. We need rain so bad. Please. Sparrow's Cave, is that a Black Lagoon mask sculpt? No, um, I just put some ridges in it because it's gonna, this will be the interior of a mouth and I just want it to blend in. Right now this looks really weird. Hopefully when I'm done, it'll look kind of weird. 95 people are watching. This will not be a difficult sculpture. Um, 
just because of the nature of what it is. Doing it, executing it well is going to be the hard part. Ralph says that he loved the shirts he wore one today. Awesome. Well, thank these guys, Ralph. They're the ones who got it for you. Yeah, it's the Creepers. The creepers all kind creepers of pitched in on happen. that. Simply because I like the uniform look, they're all going to be large teeth, um, and I think it's going to work really well for this type of critter. Let's let's shrink this down a little bit. Uh, let's bring this here. Stan, if you clip that to a table in the other room and hit the button to turn the fans on, it'll probably drive pretty fast. It's a possibility. just kind of change things a little bit by bringing in the, the mouth, the face. Will black mesh go over the eyes? Yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, all of this interior here we painted black uh, for, for the first copy, for sure. Uh, and then uh, I'm not sure what I would do for anything that I make for me in the future. Is tonight an original sculpt? Uh, Yes, yes, in that it is not from a TV show or series. Stan wearing sandals and socks. <laughs> uh, probably. Uh, Stan <laughs> is a white man in his 40s. <laughs> and uh, they are very prone to wearing... I didn't even notice. <laughs> they are prone to wearing sandals and socks. You're a white man in your 40s. And I sometimes wear sandals and socks. <laughs> I can't, I can't help it. Like, I wake up and the code says I have to. Oh. Ezekiel, I didn't even notice. KBFX, how are you swapping the shots? Okay, so if I turn this camera over to Jacob, you can see Jacob at a computer, and he is monitoring it with a set of software called OSB which allows us, it's a streaming software, which then runs through YouTube, and that's how we are doing several multi-cameras with a live feed. So there you go. And I'm gonna move this camera to here, just so that you guys have a bit of a different angle on that sculpture. So stand up, Mike. And you can see my sweet, hot wife. Jacob, am, uh, are, am I going to put that on my computer, or? No, you're just trying to do this one. We're going to do that one, yeah. Okay. Come here, Stan. What's up? Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> Stan, are you wearing socks and sandals? They're you key. Got the room, that alone that counts. Does that count? Look, look towards that camera. They want to see your socks and sandals. They're keys. That's not they're, really they're sandals. They're keys, so they're not they're like not straight. Sandals. They're not sandals. They're keys. They're sa There's like sports activity to the SUV <laughs> of sandals. <laughs> They're the Cadillac Escalade of sandals. Uh, if, uh, Ezekiel is, is checking out what you're wearing. If flip-flops were, were if, if flip flops are cars, then that's those are an SUV. <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah, I'm just saying. No, they, they're, they're great. I, I got a pair of keys. I would take Like, them. I wore out a pair. It took me 15 them. years, and I went and had to search to find the exact same pair. Like, I mean, like, 
So I had there. I had a pair of um, combat boots, which were like desert combat boots, sandy colored, and I think Converse made them. And I went on a quest to find more, and I lament the loss of those boots yep. because I I can't find another pair. They were wonderful. Ezekiel shakes head. I never went through the sandals and socks. Good friends won't let friends do that. <laughs> well, I Stan came to me one day and said, "Listen, I'm either going to wear these socks and sandals, or I might try crystal meth." And I'm like, you know, I would just go with the socks and sandals, Stan. So as a friend, that's the direction I led him in. So much cheaper. Yeah, way less. So, Jacob, deep stream master. Good work, Jacob. He's going to teach me his ways, and we'll be able to do a uh, just a little bit of a better production value. If I'm going to be live this much, I might as well do it right, right? My girlfriend said that when I go to Texas, I need to buy four pairs of sandals. Yeah. How long will you be at this tonight? Uh, I will probably stop at 10 p.m. Ezekiel says Crocs sandals. That's a no. I never own Crocs. They don't look comfortable. I have worn Crocs and sandals. Oh, uh, it's Crocs and socks. I've been that guy. So, what do you think of the Crocs? What do you, do you like them? I like Crocs. They're they're actually really comfortable. The problem is, if you wear them long term, then um, they're really not good for you. Tina Kusiak says, I'm 36 and I wear socks and sandals far too much. She is white and dirty. Hello, Sometimes we have the dogs break down cardboard boxes for, for, recycling, for recycling purposes. Morris. He is a, a quality boy. shop help for us. He's a good boy. Good boy. your boy. Morris was the first one to let me pick him up, and Alan made me put him down. Did I? People oh, who something live, about no word getting done. Something, yeah. yeah. Something like People that. who don't live by the sea wear a lot of socks. Yes. A while back, I chatted with you about the perforated Kydex. Were you able to find it? Did I say that right? I have Kydex? not been able to find it. Here's the beauty of it. I'm middle aged, bald, married. I have no reason to be full anymore. That's right. Like I, I'm set. I'm like I, 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 It's a bonus if I don't wear the socks, but if I do, it's you know, if that ends my marriage, well, good luck to her. The sock was I think Hello, 99 people. So what I'm doing right now is, I don't, can they see this, Jacob? Yeah. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I am what is called trenching. So this is what I normally, I used to make these out of popsicle sticks, but now I do them on the laser. And these will, these will be on the website soon, wife. Sculpting tools. Whenever you're ready. You're um, I just need more information. Okay, let's, let's you and I sit down tomorrow night. We'll get them on the website tomorrow night. <laughs> Um, but so this is the tool that I carve in this wrinkle with and then I go in with a loop tool and I just knock the edge off of it and that's going to make that look much more like a wrinkle and less like a um, tool mark is what they're called. Um, if you just scratch the clay then it looks like a tool scratch the clay. It doesn't look like a wrinkle and going back and making your wrinkles look like wrinkles and not like tool marks is, uh, it's kind of that second stage of sculpting. The first stage is you, when you want to put a wrinkle somewhere, you just scratch a line in it and you call it good. Um, and if it were a sketch on paper, it would be good. 
but since this is a sculpture, it's going to have some weight. And wrinkles evoke fat. You don't have wrinkles where there is bone. You know, it's going to be stretched tight over the bone. You might have taut lines, uh, those kind of lines, stretch lines, but you won't have these wrinkles. Uh, this implies that this is fleshy material, and I want that to come across. One of the hardest things that we do is make clay, which is doughy, not look just like dough on everything that we make. There's a set of, is it four or five tools, Stan? Five. There's a set of five tools that is 20 bucks. And uh, I can show what those are a little bit later. Um, and then there is this scraper that I used, which is like a kidney basically, but it's what I used to my, for my primary rake out. Uh, this guy is five bucks. Um, and it's got three different teeth sizes on it. And then there is a large scale tool, which is also five bucks, but you get a small scale tool in the kit. scale tool, it's going to earn its weight. I'm kind of doing the same thing now, but I'm doing it underneath. And I'm not even worried about the inside of the mouth right now. That area doesn't even have a lot of detail. Uh, the client wants that to be all black. So I'm going to sculpt some detail in there, but you won't really see that when I paint it all black. sculpting at the mid to higher levels is mitigating the damage that the tools do. Um, because your tool doesn't leave an organic impression. Uh, a lot of your tools are metal and they just leave a, uh, there's a harshness to them that we have to kind of mellow out. Like even this is probably my favorite loop tool. I don't know if that's in focus or not. But it is a, it's a brass square, but it is twisted, and that leaves little bites, so that that kind of breaks up even the the bite of the loop tool. Now it's broken up. Thanks for the tool prices. I will check your website periodically. Uh, just just check uh, Friday. Warmonger says I just finished a sculpt of a Fiji mermaid. Awesome. How do you mount your heads for the Monster Museum? I'm planning on making a few head mounts of my own masks to put up in my house. Uh, I actually have several live feeds where I'm doing that, so you can easily see it. But basically, I foam fill the half masks with uh, Loctite foam now is how I do it. 
I foam fill the mask with Loctite, and then I um, I buy a table form from Home Depot that is an 18 inch round. Uh, Home Depot has them on their website. Uh, some Home Depots carry them in store. It's just, it's like a tabletop, and uh, I use those. I'm loving this little camera. It gives oh. A crisp picture. And Ezekiel is on. And I want to tell you that these are a Logitech HD 1080p, right? These are Logitech cameras, uh, HD 1080p. I know that Ezekiel wanted this camera information, and uh, I did not have a Jacob. Yeah, so they're Logitech HD Pro Webcam C920. That's the model. Uh, Jacob, are you able to put that in the stream as a comment? I can put it in the Creepers group. Put it on the Creepers group, and if you can, tag Ezekiel Bradshaw. All right. I was at Hobby Lobby and came across shimmering mermaid print material. I said to my wife, ooh, mermaid. And the same day, I see some Halloween mermaid skeletons in the same exact mermaid material. Yeah. Looks really good. Thanks. We're well. We're getting there. Right now, it's kind of just a big old face, but it's gonna we're gonna make it tighter and make it nicer. And all I'm doing now is I'm running over the top of these wrinkles to calm them down a little bit. So it's lip time. All right, and I have, I've got a tool for that. Um, this is another one of the sculpting tools that, see that? That has a, a roundness to it. It's a quarter round tool, round lip. And I, I, I started making these guys after, out of uh, tongue depressors, but I saw core curb forming machines. And the curb forming machine really kind of gave me the idea that, well, you know what, if I want a long strip of something, all I have to do is cut that shape into a tongue depressor. But the grain of the wood sort of makes this shape difficult. Uh, it's just not strong enough. Ezekiel said, thanks for the camera, though. No problem, sir. James Minnick says, hello. Hello, James Minnick. Good to have you on again. Is, is Clay Goodwin watching? Sometimes I think Clay Goodwin just lurks. But if he's watching, I want to say happy birthday to him. I missed it by a day or two. Again, I just got a new laptop. Okay. Hello, Dan Miles. Asano says the Monster Camp videos were awesome. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Monster Camp is a lot of fun. Um, it's a little weird, like, like, I'm not a nurse, I'm not a policeman, I'm not a soldier. The, the, the frontline work where I get to do some good is I get to help people make stuff. And that means a lot, actually. Um, that's, that is my service to the community. And Monster Camp is one of the most direct ways uh, yes, my, I think my videos help people sometimes. Uh, I think my positive attitude on video helps people sometimes. But there's something about having just a small group of people here in the shop and they're making something for the first time. And I give them a lump of clay on Friday morning and Sunday there is a creature or a monster that existed in their head and now we can walk around. And I think that's one of the coolest things that I get to do. John C. says, militarybootsdirect.com has 12 different Converse boots. <laughs> I will check them out. I want to come to Monster Camp one day soon, says Realms. Come on, Realms. I'm ready for you. Stephen Bishop says hello. Hey, Stephen Bishop. Do you have a guest sculptor tonight? I don't have a guest sculptor tonight. Uh, I'm still in a little bit of mold debt, 
um, as I, I have a couple things that I'm working on, so um, I, I don't, I'm not able to yet. Maybe next Wednesday I will, because it has been a couple weeks. See how I'm using this tool to just round this out? It's, it's just helping. feel a lot of things, 1980. Frisky is normally not one of them. <laughs> How do Where's I see you? I'm assuming we need to find our own room and board for Monster Camp. I think it would be fun to just go and enjoy mask making with other people. Um, yes. Um, uh, well, we have a host hotel that we recommend. And I actually pick people up from the host hotel in the morning and then drive them back here in the big van that I've got. So, um, yeah, you, you, do, you do arrange your own accommodations, but we do have a, a couple suggestions for you. We don't leave you in the dark. making a creature that I'm just going to call Toothface. Um, uh, he has a, I think the name was like the soulless or something of this race of people for this LARP group. Um, but I don't, I don't have that right in front of me. Um, and yeah. Good evening, everyone. How are we doing? That's Joseph Creation. Joseph, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Do you blast the Godzilla horn out in front of the hotel for pickup? Uh, I actually blasted it every morning this time. Yes. Outside the hotel? Yes, I did. Because <laughs> normally, normally Steve Haynes was there. Oh, yeah, I didn't even know that Amber and Stan were in the Bucky's parking lot. And as I pulled in, I hit the Godzilla horn to park. I hit the Godzilla horn way more often than you think I do, wife. Um, because that Godzilla horn is awesome. 8.30 in the morning on a Saturday. Yeah, hotel. it's awesome. Okay. We were walking, about to walk into Bucky's after a Saturday night. And we heard it go off and immediately like, oh, hey, Alan's here. Yeah. Oh, Misty Jezereski, for Monster Camp, do you allow a person to tent camp on your property? We do not at this juncture. Because Alan will put on a Bigfoot costume and he will... And I will scare the snot out of at you. At 3 in the morning and then you won't get any rest. And I'm telling you, that is why I don't want you to camp here. Right. Besides the fact that I won't there's get any wildlife rest and giant insects, Alan will keep you from getting proper rest. Yeah, do guys not, don't think I'm joking. So do not underestimate Texas mosquitoes. I'm not kidding. Mosquitoes, copperheads. Well, and, I mean, it he, depends on what time of year, too. But, but still, he would still, with babies. if I told him, do not put on that costume and scare those people, let's do it. You guys would probably love it. It's terrible. Everybody loves it. Yeah, please come scare me. No. biggest spider you think you found out here? Like in di diameter. Here on this property? Yes. So what's funny is on during monster camp there was one that was probably three inches across and as I got close to it its back was covered in baby spiders. Yeah. Yeah I got that on video too. That's a good one. B. Brown I just uh, tagged you on a link to the, the website for Monster Camp that has uh, information for use. And if you have any questions, you can always send us an email. Uh, 
much. That uh, that should give you the basics. Someone say, what's Monster Camp? Like one word for Dan Miles, I suffer from extreme anxiety and depression. There are times when watching your streams are the only thing that helps me. Uh, well, that is that is good to hear. I'm glad I'm able to help in some small way. What is the Godzilla horn? Is it posted somewhere? Uh, so on my van, um, my loving wife uh, got me a custom horn for Christmas. And then I had it installed. So when I hit the horn of my van, it is the Godzilla roar, is what it sounds like. She got it for me. I did. She can't blame me. I can't. It's I wife's made, fault. I made that happen. Chad Smith, I think my next sculpt is going to be a dino. I'm a little worried about the snout and it being able to stay upright and not hang. Any tips on avoiding this, or I just have to fill it with casting? Well, uh, number one, make sure you have a good armature, a good strong armature that you're going to use when you're sculpting, because that's going to be a lot of clay and a lot of weight. Uh, and then number two, uh, you can foam fill with any number of rigid foams, and uh, that's going to do wonders for supporting your sculpture. Joseph uh, Creations, I feel sorry for the Japanese photo convention going on at that resort. Masato, if I brought an RV, could I camp? Uh, Masato, actually, uh, about 10 minutes away. Yeah, very close by. Very close. There's a beautiful RV park that when my family comes to stay, they bring their RV. Yeah. And uh, so we put our family there, and it's a beautiful RV park. Very close, very clean. Uh, it's just a lovely park. And so, yes, you can bring an RV, and that would be very convenient. Yeah, our, our property actually has too many trees to get an RV on it. Can't get you here. <laughs> Jesse York, what's the fun of having costumes if you can't scare unsuspecting people? Exactly my point, sir. Jordan the Easel says, I just got back. Did I miss something? No, no, we waited for you. West Texas scorpions are fun. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, Stan the other day made a very manly noise. When he, he was quite manly. when he <laughs> discovered a scorpion uh, over by the laser table under some paperwork and clutter that he allowed to accrue. I am very happy that this happened because it has changed Stan's ways of organization. Maybe it hasn't, but yeah, they have a one can hope. <laughs> we have a request for the board. Okay, we Go can do it. this. All right, we're going to go on a field trip. It's we'll only 8.40, so it's not too What late. time is it, honey? It's 8.40, but that's Wrong, wife. It's Godzilla time. <laughs> that's what time it is. Guys. Uh, oh, no. The same Okay, we're doing our camera system different, so the phone does you no good. <laughs> you can maybe hear it a little bit, but we left the mic. That's the only downside of having like one mic.
Yes, uh, it's very lamprey-esque, actually. So uh, it is a creature called Toothface. Um, for now, it's Toothface. And that, see, all these, each of these little balls is going to hold a tooth. And uh, I am now melding all these little balls together. And these are going to be like a wall of interior gums. I think this creature is called the Soulless, but I don't know for sure. I don't remember anyway. I should remember, but I'm a can terrible they person. Can they can hear it. Oh, that's awesome. They are very pleased. <laughs> Lots of cards. I need a wicked evil horn for the hearse. You do. Leslie! Hi, Leslie Norfolk. Leslie, what day are you going to swing by? Corey says I want that horn as my doorbell. You want to swing by Friday, Leslie? Chad Smith, I think I have a pretty decent armature. I will be using my live cast for the sculpt. It will, my, it will be the first time using it. Cool. Awesome. Can't you show the laser table when you can? Uh, well, I'll do that in a YouTube Wednesday video here coming up. Leslie asked, is Friday good? Uh, Friday's good. How the doggos and footy cats <laughs> react to the horn? Uh, you know what? They're so used to this kind of stuff around here. Uh, the first time that I did it, they were a little alarmed, but they just get used to it. Is Toothface from the no. cold gates of hell? No. But there may be, I mean, this isn't like, by no means is this the only design of a, of a face with a ring of teeth, you know. And I'm going to grab some pumpkin teeth real quick just to see. Would you grab large ones for me, Stan? Yep. into a finer tool. This is a Ken's tool, uh, loop tool. And uh, I will use this to blend off some of these nodules. Our beauty said that you're missing Chelsea. He'll probably pop in eventually. Thank you, sir. I'm gonna need a lot more. Probably double that amount. So one thing that you do when you're sculpting, or that I do when I'm sculpting, is that I tend to put things on heavy, and that's not natural. And then I spend a lot of time raking down or burnishing with a loop tool to get it to look calmer and just be a little more natural. Um, a lot of natural forms are actually very subtle, but in our brain, when we're making them, we think that they're massive, and that's why, you know, how often do you see a, a new person sculpt and they make the lips huge, you know, or the uh, the brow ridge is just massive, or even pointy, and that, that's not a natural look. And you put it on, and then you need to calm it down. It's a very foul conversation here, but you ever get something out of your nose and it feels gigantic? You're like, oh, I'm so glad that's out of my nose. It happens a lot in the shop because there's plaster, thing called plaster boogers, which are great for you. Right. Um, They're real. And then, you know, you you get it out. And, of course, you pulled it a foreign invader from your body. you got to look at it. <laughs> and then you're like, well, that's way smaller and less impressive than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and that's kind of what natural forms are. Um, they're just smaller than you think. The... Uh, the difference between good sculpting and great sculpting is honestly several sweeps with a rake tool and it's subtle differences but it they change a sculpt tremendously 
and it's making everything look like it's on purpose. Having a bunch of jagged tool marks, um, it just means that you didn't go over that area and finish it. What are good alternatives to packs for foam latex? Have you been used an Edmonds formula for foam latex? I would use rubber cement. I have. I can't travel with that in my van. Uh, mostly what I do is I, um, I use, uh, because I use foam latex a lot for uh, prosthetics, we use it at dark hour, we make our own foam latex prosthetics, and um, we paint it with the alcohol based uh, makeup that we use on the actors, so that way it all kind of matches and blends in. If I were painting foam latex here, uh, I would probably mix up the same latex mask paint formula with um, a little bit more uh, latex in it. It's one thing to make a shape, it's another thing to control it and um, make, uh, you know, the, the, one of the last stages that I do on my sculptures is I, I, I say I'm making everything look like it's on purpose. I don't want any blob of clay to just land there and then I'm happy with it. That's not me enforcing my will on the clay, that's the clay telling me what to do. And that's unacceptable. Does it take a natural 20 to be two-faced? I know it is in D and D, just making jokes. Um, who was that? Jesse. Okay, I don't think it would take a nat 20. I, I, I believe that Toothface only has a Thacko seven. And his armor class is probably in the 10 range, because I didn't see them wearing a lot of armor in the reference pictures. Have you ever seen fake nails used as teeth? I found out about this technique recently, and it's pretty easy. Absolutely, I have. Yes. Good night, Michael Lassiter. Do the nails cause problems? Oh, uh, I, I think, I assume he means for makeup. this and I may want to even go with smaller teeth. Stan, can you find me mediums? Those are hard to come by. Ned Miles, I just ordered a 12 pack of pumpkin teeth from Etsy. Was yes. surprised to see your smiling picture on the page. Well, uh, I pimp Bob's teeth quite a bit. So, um, me and Bob are buddies. Uh, Jesse says yes for makeup, but fake nails. Even, even uh, Corey Seymour, I turned him on the pumpkin teeth, I bet six years ago, like five years ago. It had to be a long time ago, right? Um, because he was doing a mask similar to this, where it was a, uh, I think it was a Mongolian death worm mask. He has a, Corey Seymour has a great series of, uh, boy, what do they call those? Cryptid masks. He has a good Jersey Devil. He has just some good cryptid masks. Corey Seymour, if you're on um, the Creepers page, please post your work in there and show people your awesome masks. Will the teeth impair vision? No, uh, the teeth are going to help hide the eyes. So they'll kind of, they'll kind of impair vision, but not that much. Joanne says, okay, says hammer time. What am I looking at? It looks like a leech. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we, we veered off course, Joanne. I'm sorry. Uh, it was going to be hammer time, and hammer time is drying. We based hammer time out. And in that time, I have started a sculpture. Because it's Wednesday. It's because it's Wednesday. So I'm going to go ahead and get this sculpture going slash done. When you sculpt, I'm sorry, when you 
you sculpt that area, does the small loop tool get yoked up? Uh, it can, and you just you pick it clean in between every swipe, actually. In between every swipe, you just kind of pick it clean. Okay, that's funny. 1980 says it needs a tiny bow of fetness teeth. Yes, sarlacc. it does. It is very sarlacc. Very sarlacc. Chad Smith, would this design be somewhat based around a naked mole rat? This one, no. No, no, no. Corey no. says, yes, my first Midwater, Midwest Hunters Convention, I was making each tooth individually. Because you hate yourself. Because pumpkin teeth are so much better. I'm so grateful for being introduced to this. And you even tipped me off to the, uh, you even tipped me off to using the glow in the dark ones because they have a translucency. That's not something that I had done before, really. So that was a tip that, because I told you about pumpkin teeth, that came back to me uh, in the form of you telling me about, hey, use the glow in the dark because they have a nice translucency and look like real teeth. With the bonus of them glowing in the dark. Wednesday, I'm going to be honest with you, the real targeted videos about mask making, that is such a much smaller audience that they just don't get that many views. Um, what people mostly want to see from my channel is stuff that they can make and stick in their yard for Halloween. Like that is the crux of what they want to see. So. I try not to do too many targeted videos on mask making, but sometimes I just have to uh, because mask making is a passion of mine. And I had not seen any good like talk through video of the whole process of mask making. That's why I did the one I did the other week. And the shop air system is generic enough for no matter what you're doing, you might want to set up an air system. Jacob, which camera switcher are you using? I'm using OBS. Okay, I keep saying OSB, like it's Oriental Strand Board, which is not a good wood to make a haunted house out of, by the way. K&T do Halloween! Hello! Hi, guys. It's Hey, Alan, Shannon, maybe a dumb question. But how would you distress Muddy Up Booth's shoes? More permanent than actual mud. I feel like you already have a video about this. I need to look. Uh, latex acrylic caulking with acrylic paint mixed in. So you can get the, um, you can even get a brown latex acrylic caulking, which looks a lot like poop, just by the way. Um, and you can, not that that's what you wanted, um, and then you can mix in like peat moss with that. Uh, you can mix in peat moss, you can mix things into it in order to add some chunky to the boots. What's that? Little pebbles. Right? Yeah, yeah, little pebbles, little um, that kind of stuff. Aquarium rock. It says uh, that size tooth looks much better. Good choice. It does, yeah. It, it makes a nice ring, it fills out the mouth. Uh, I gotta take my glasses off. My eyes aren't, like, I can't do both well, so glasses I make, off. I am making a Ghost Rider costume. Any suggestions on the flames? I was thinking uh, probably a heat gun shape in the flames with a light paint and LED inside the plastic. Um, yes, uh, make sure it's a flickering LED, and uh, that I've seen that work with pretty good success, some flickering LEDs. If you, if you have a way to uh, do some steam, you can re really make some nice, like with a, a vape, a modified vape set, uh, you can do some really nice flame effects with that. 
Jesse York. Those make it and stick it in your yard videos are how, how I found your channel. I think it was the graveyard statue that I found first. And you know what? I'm going to be doing a update of the graveyard statue because I have a way to, I would make the graveyard statue completely different now. And honestly, like when I did that video, that was like on a whim. Um, so now I know how I would do it differently and I have several plans on how I would make that happen differently. Justin Rudy, I got the glove to work. The hand doesn't fit the glove right, but I used coat hangers, like you said, and it worked like a charm. Awesome, Justin, I'm glad to hear that. Warmonger says, 16 T. 16 T. <laughs> Dan Miles says, that's the same one I saw first, Jesse. That's a very popular video of mine. The sculpt is looking great so far. Hey, thanks. 123 people are watching. Hello, 123 people. <clears throat> yep. The sculpt is looking good. I'm very happy with the direction it's going in. So I thought I would cut it up. Yeah, at Monster Camp, the only time people get nervous is if I walk towards their sculpture while I'm holding the wire. <laughs> oh no, he's got the wire. The wire. It's an editing tool, and it's it, it does it does a lot more good than harm. I swear. To me, it's the fastest way to fix mistakes. I'm intrigued with the statue since I want one or two in my graveyard. Joanne Crowley, I really like the graveyard statue. Glad you mentioned it before. I had bought anything for it. Yeah, just wait. Just wait. It won't be that long either. Corey Seymour, I also use them in my new Chupacabra mask. Yeah. Awesome. Did I buy one of those? Did I buy a Chupacabra from you? I think I did. I bought something. Yeah, I think I bought a chupacabra from you. But it was, in fairness, right before the world ended. 1980 says, Mongol Top, and Joanne says, Ouch, gives me the shivers every time you take out the wire. Justin Rudy says, I'm not going to say the baker, but the amount I pay, the hand should match a lot better than it does. So I'm not really happy. I shouldn't have to rig something that costs over $200 to get what they advertise. So thank you for the help. Uh, you know what? plan on rigging everything simply because no one makes anything for you you know they don't make it for you they make it um, to suit their interests and their interest often is selling it and that's okay there's nothing wrong with that um, but you just have to keep in mind that uh, you are not their primary interest when they're making something <laughs> One time with Monster Camp. Sparrow's Cave. So, Alan, I told my niece I was going to make her a costume today, and she asked me, really? And I said, yes. Since you drink tea so much, I'll make you a tea bag costume and make you look like a bag of unmade tea. And was she thrilled with this? <laughs> Corey Seymour, for the Monster Museum, I've been dying to see the paint schemes you, yeah. you saw on it. Eventually. Remember that whole world ending thing.
Uh, I wanted to pull these out because I felt like the nose was just sticking way too far out. Now by pulling these up, I'll be able to have, you know, everything contained better inside of the mouth. First thing I did was trimmed his latex, and then we uh, we dremeled him. Well, Stan dremeled him, and we based him out in black. I don't even know that he is dry yet. Um, if he's dry in a reasonable hour, then I may switch gears and start painting him. But at this point, I have a better chance of finishing this sculpture than I do of uh, um, getting Hammerhead finished being painted by the time I was anticipated stopping. Ezekiel says, my son wants to go as Sam from Trick or Treat this year. Any suggestions on the burlap part of the mask? I prefer not to do paper mache. Don't. Um, buy one of the big plastic jack-o'-lanterns that are like 20 bucks and use that to go over top of your head or over top of his head. And then you cut windows out of that big jack-o'-lantern um, and then you put burlap over top of that but you can cut big panels out of that jack-o'-lantern and the, um, that makes a skeleton frame to hold the burlap. I've made several Sams that way. Yeah, but I won't get them finished before 10 o'clock. <coughs> so I will get him done tomorrow. He will be tomorrow's live video. But if I if I'm painting it, I want to finish it in one night, you know. It's just not big enough. It's not big enough. It's How do you uh, have an adult Sam Same way. The, the, those pumpkins are big. Um, and uh, if you, if anyone has seen my friend Laura's costume for Sam, uh, we did the head that that same way. And uh, she is a little person, but she has a normal sized head. Um, and you know her head's smaller than mine, but. She has a human head. Is she a human? Is she an adult? So says her consumption of beverages. <laughs> Joseph Creation says, or make a ball shape with EVA foam and cover it with burlap. You could. You could. Uh, I just like that the, the pumpkins are already done. You know, they're, they're built. Poison sumac. I may be wrong, but I think there's a Maury Hill that has a second set of teeth. The uh, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah. okay. Snapping turtle mouths are some of my favorite in nature because they're so sketchy looking. You guys get a lot of trick-or-treaters where you're located. Sketchy turtles. We wouldn't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm always at work. I'm not a trick-or-treater guy. I'm a haunted house guy. So I'm normally out scaring people. We're, we're never home on Halloween. Yeah, I'm always at work. Here, Target has them, and uh, there's a picture on my Facebook of me having it on my head. That was my profile picture for a while. <laughs> They're about 20 bucks. U.S.
charge a full bag of plaster or only the portion used along with only the portion of latex used and clay? Uh, I, I proportion it. It is um, a prorated amount, let's call it. Alan is the MacGyver of haunts. Uh, you know what? I think every haunter is a MacGyver. And uh, maybe I've, I've had to think about more things than they have. But if, if they sit and think about it, anybody would come up with the solutions that I come up with or solutions that are twice as clever. I think being a haunter leads to being a MacGyver. Because you have budget concerns and you have budget constraints. And you have material constraints. More like Edison. see my butt very often. Like that's a rare treat. Forever too. It's in the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> that's my legacy. shake my money maker, then I would do this. Sculpting tools, yo. My daughter, seven, was going through my trans world picks for her costume uh -oh. and says she decided <laughs> on a Midnight Studios FX style pumpkin rotten suit type thing. Challenge accepted. Nice. Who, who was that? Ezekiel. Yeah. Heck yeah. There's a lot of fun in acknowledging that someone else did something awesome and then, you know, can I, can I do that? Um, the only time I'm not a fan of it is when, you know, you try and convince a bunch of people not to buy that person's product because you made it yourself. Uh, you can. A lot of us vendors actually aren't selling products, we're selling time. Um, because, you know, pro haunts, I think we, Pro haunts spend more uh, money than they do time because we don't have time. Chad Smith says, new t-shirt, Ezekiel. I don't get to see my butt often. It's kind of a treat. It is a treat. I don't get to see my bum. Corey says, I ran to the bathroom. Did I miss anything in the last five minutes? Uh, I oh, did God. some sweet, sweet camber twerking. <laughs> and I bet that you're upset about that. <laughs> wow. my backup career. Get it? Back up? That's, that's my back. Alan's gone. Wait, that was Ice Ice Baby. I don't, I, I don't know the music for that song. Not in front of the children. Not in front of the children. Okay. Uh, so what I just painted on this is actually um, floor wax, like future floor wax. This happens to be orange glow monthly polish, but uh, it's something that I put on some sculptures <laughs> to change their look and their tone. Rachel Martinez says dad jokes. <laughs> I'm having trouble with my great stuff skulls shrinking. I mist with water as I apply to a milk jug skull. Are you using great stuff? Uh, if you're using Loctite, they'll do that a lot less. Um, I don't use great stuff for a bunch. Um, and 
honestly, what I think you ought to do is just embrace the individuality of your skulls as long as they're shrinking at a rate that is still usable. Um, because, you know, if, if you make them out of a mold, there's even worse if they all turn out exactly the same. Because uh, that's just not how the world is. So these teeth, they're going to kind of form a cage around the eyes. And what happens is um, people's vision normally stops at whatever their eyes lands on first. Like, people don't look into bushes. They look at that first layer of leaves on the bush, and they think that's the bush. And if they look through that layer of leaves, then you see all the branches on the inside, and there's a lot more going on. But our eyes, we don't need that detail all the time. So it's not something that we pick up and that we, that we do a lot. So these teeth will completely stop people from seeing this actor's eyes. I'm still going to black screen it. All this in here will be black. But... Yes, it was great stuff. Yeah. Uh, great stuff is not very moisture stable. So if it's any kind of rain out or if it's uh, high humidity, then I would definitely not use great stuff. I wouldn't, uh, don't do any foaming on a day with high humidity. Kim Kennedy says, can I come play with the dog? Sure. <laughs> Whatever happened to the Silver Street trailer at the other house? I, we've never had a Silver Street trailer. John C? Yeah. That must be a joke. Sorry. Yeah, we, we've never had a Silver Street Whatever trailer. Whatever happened to the Silver Street trailer at the other house? I don't know. But a pirate's favorite letter is the C. I learned that one. Good night, big dog. Good night, big dog. Ben Godwolf says, I loved your milk jug skull tutorial. Just kidding. Yeah. I actually get thanked for that a lot, and I've never done a milk jug skull tutorial. It's like, just, just take $3, don't burn yourself. And yeah, and just buy buy a skull. Dollar Store now has decent skulls. They got rid of the the terrible cheesy uh, blucky skulls they used to sell, and their skulls aren't bad. It's a dollar. They're small, but it's a dollar. Realms right now they're attacking Stan. Yes. This is what the dog's doing. <laughs> they're greeting Stan. They're attacking Stan. As if he hasn't been in here all day with them. John C. says, in an old video, it was outside. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't, I He's talking about the shop at Screams. And maybe there was a, wow. like, an Airstream type trailer there. Uh, my, my, when I worked at Screams Halloween Park, uh, I was in a very interesting shop space. And we had uh, all kinds of things show up all the time. John, that must be where what you were seeing. Making us think, though. Well, Can you put it on the tiny table cam? Does the floor wax stuff you put on the sculpture take the place of pledge, or do you still need it for a release agent? I pledge later. The, at this stage, I use the um, pledge more for sculpting than I do for a release. I'm using it to homogenize the sculpture. Say hello, Philip Earl. Uh, hello, Philip Earl. Stone Farmer. I do the haunted house at work, the orange apron hardware place. And my manager walked in on me making masks from long time foam the other day. He just watched in amazement at the skull I was making. Awesome. I'm so glad you did it. Did you like the process? Did you enjoy it? <laughs> I, I find the Loctite foam skull mask to be very enjoyable. So you're going to have to explain what you're doing. Uh, Nancy Daddy thinks it's a Dr. Pimple Popper thing. What did you just do? Show well, what that was. So what I did was I um, put
put some clay into a syringe that I have modified to just make the hole bigger and then I squeeze it out and I'm going to use that to go around each tooth uh, to make some nice gums. At this point my eyes are kind of crossing. Okay, Justin Rudy, rapid fire questions. Bring it. We're going to do trivia this time so everyone can be involved. Bye Holy questions. moly. Chad Smith, I would like to get one of those trigger clay extruders. Have you seen those? Yep, uh, I got one. Stone Farmer, it took a few attempts to get used to the water and timing to be able to work it. Yeah. But then, oh, it's a thing of beauty. This is putting that nice little welt around the teeth that uh, I think is very natural looking. So I can also do this. Yeah. Oh, I can't anymore, can I? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um. John Royce Key. Ooh, fancy camera angles. I like it. Make it look down. I want I want them to see some of these detailios. Yeah, there are some things that I'm used to that doesn't happen in this setup. Like when I take the phone away, the microphone doesn't go with me. <laughs> Can they see what I'm doing here, Jacob? No, I can move to other teeth, and I'm going to move to other teeth, so. What's unfortunate is now my dogs are very much awake and they want to play. And they are playing? And that's unfortunate because we're inside. And I have almost 300 pounds of dog. For now. But they're still only puppies. See how that makes a little welt around the, the tooth? And I can kind of blend that in. And I'll have to do that 16 or so times. Where did you get your trigger clay extruder? From Amazon? Um, eBay, actually. It was much cheaper on eBay. And I actually picked it up after I think I watched a video of Ed Edmonds's and he mentioned it or had it or something. No, you know what? It was a Stan Winston video. When I watch Stan Winston classes, I like have one Amazon window open, <laughs> like the whole time, so I could just kind of look at what they're talking about or buy it. You know, sometimes that makes sense for me because I'm in the business of doing this. Rule number one on Randy's list of rules 
for surviving a horror movie? Don't have sex. Said number one, don't drink or do drugs. Number two, don't do, don't go outside alone. Number three, don't fall asleep. Number four, don't say I'll be right back. Oh, well then maybe. <laughs> I think we saw that today in that movie. Then maybe I've maybe I've that. missed out on a lot of fun because I didn't know the rules. <laughs> that changes everything. Well, everybody else is answering, and they're saying, "Don't say I'll be right back." Number four. This is a very good camera angle. This is good. No, together. Yeah. Close up. This is this is what you're seeing, and it's really. I think it's I think its name is like Solus or the Solus is the name of this race. So yeah. <laughs> Halloween life are awesome. What do I win? You win Justin's admiration yeah. and respect. so close together. You know, see how I'm having to use my little sculpting tool here to <laughs> get that backside. Use some more chairs and Bella sit. Bella does not listen. How many people does Jason kill in the first Hall Friday the 13th film? Two, four, zero, or six? Zero. zero. It's his mama. Uh, now, unless you count the very end where he comes up and he, it's Jason who drags her under the water, so I would say the correct answer is one. Does she live? Uh, does she live? Because she lives for about the first 15 minutes of part two. Okay. <laughs> John C. says the video was YouTube. He's talking about the Silver Stream trailer. The video was YouTube Wednesday, pouring a latex mask in a plaster bowl, August 15, 2015. So maybe it was a dark hour. 2015, we weren't asleep. We don't have a silver screen trailer. Maybe it was a dark hour. We weren't screen. There was never a silver stream trailer. I don't know, John. We'll have to look. Yeah, John, I don't know what you're talking about. Because that's past screams. It wasn't at our house. Right so. now, I think that... John is involved with the devil's lettuce. <laughs> Hit a bit of the old sweet leaf there. I don't know. If I had a silver stream, then I would trade it for a big laser cutter. So, Justin, I'm not a big judgy person. Well, okay, I am. But I'm not exactly calling these questions rapid fire, yo. <laughs> these are these are like slow fire questions. Even these things. Yeah. Patrick Redding just got here. He says, wow, what a mouse. Yeah. If I had a dollar for a time, I heard that in my life. I would have a dollar. <laughs> Let's 
see, I, I want all of this stuff to be rounded and fleshy. So these parts are inside of the mouth. So what happens is the, the lip would constantly be moving over them. These should be very smooth. If you think about river rocks, river rocks are very smooth and they're very rounded. And that's the forms that I want to bring into this because you know this is in, you know, in theory, a very wet mouth. So this is happening, you know, there there is some form of water erosion happening to the mouth to make it very smooth. You're not going to have a lot of sharp inside the mouth aside from the teeth. You're going to get these real flowy forms. And I'm getting that by, because the pledge kind of eats away a little bit. Uh, with the future floor wax, I should call it, uh, eats away just a little bit, and it helps me smooth it out. Corey Seymour says, I've cut those pumpkin teeth down to multiple lengths to give it an unsettling look. Yeah. Yeah, Shots. you you had to put like 200 of them though in, in a single mask. I mean, you had a lot of teeth in that mask. John C., you carried out the pig chinless mask fold out the door to the right in building in between two buildings to put it in the sun on the ground next to a silver streak next to a big roll up door building. <laughs> Yeah, but you wouldn't see me walk between two buildings. Justin Rudy. Sounds like screams, but not 2015. 2015. What was the original title of the blob? Oh, I don't know that one. Was it the lump, the thing, the glob, or the spheroid? I would probably say the glob. nice circular mouth going. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more detail in here and then smooth that out. Corey Seymour says, yeah, that bleach mask was crazy. I'm actually planning on remaking it since my sculpting skills have improved. Yes. Uh, you know what? I would say they have. I mean, I've seen your latest things. Uh, not that your other stuff was bad at all, but, you know, we just get better. I mean, heck, mine have improved since then. Sparrow's Cave says the Kraken. No. Chad Smith says, was that a video of someone else's font? No, no, Chad, we'll just have to look. Loving the teeth overview? Sparrow's Cave says it's the glob. Justin says the glob is correct. So some, one thing that I tell uh, haunted houses when they're kind of naming their show is, especially if they're at a very small level and they, they're likely to kind of stay that way for a while if they're not going to throw like 100000 out of marketing budget, take advantage of all the free advertising you get from newspapers and just list of events that are happening in October. And one way to take advantage of that is to name your show pretty early in the alphabet. So, you know, if you're looking at a list of haunted houses, Zombie Nightmare is going to be the last one that you see. Well, by the time the person reads through that whole list, would they have found another haunted house that was closer to go to? Um, maybe. But if, you're, you know, if your haunted house is like, let's just say, darkness or something that's pretty early in the alphabet, that, uh, that's not a bad way to go. I worked for a haunt that was called the Adamsville Terror Complex, and uh, that was why they had that name. And you know, to a degree, it worked. Got me a wife. <laughs> John Boyski, there is a blob festival every summer in Pennsylvania. I know that. Uh, I, you know what? I, one of my <coughs> dreams is, uh, and the only like TV show that I would do. The only TV show that I would do, I think, is 
I want to do a TV show based on monster festivals. Oh my gosh. Where I make, I, I meet with the festival owners, you know, we talk about the festival, and then, you know, I see some B-roll or whatever of festivals from the past, and then I make a costume, and then I go to the festival that year with that costume. And I already know that I could do like the Rougarou Fest in Louisiana. There's plenty of Bigfoot festivals that I could go to. Um, I could go to the Blob Fest. I could go to, I mean, there's so many different monster themed festivals. I think I could get a few seasons out of it. Um, and it's just something that I would love to do. And I think it would be fun because, you know, we're, we're traveling, but then we're coming back and we're making, making a monster suit for a very specific purpose, and I think that has a degree of interest for people. But the fact that it's a costume, and then, then you can see people interacting with it. And um, call me crazy, but I think that people need more monsters in their lives, and I think that they need that um, in order to show that different you know, the amount of different that you can tolerate and that you can enjoy the company of is high. Um, a little ridiculous, but, you know, you can extrapolate that and into fighting racism. You can extrapolate that into uh, all kinds of things. Um, one of the things that makes me angry, honestly, is when a parent sees a monster somewhere and goes to their kid party, oh, scary monster, run away! And they freak the kid out. And, I, I, you know, that's, I don't think that that's what we need to do because you're teaching your kids that anything different than you is scary and should be feared. And frankly, that's racist. And, you know, I, and, and yeah, I know that that's kind of heavy talk, but I think that as a monster, one of the things that I really want to do is kind of normalize monsters so that any people you meet who are different than you, well, the monster was cool, so this guy can't be that bad. You know? Is that crazy? Maybe. That's about as idealist as I get. <laughs> okay, so I'm happy with the mouth here. And uh, maybe Jacob can help me out with mouth cam part of time. Corey Seymour says the original mask was supposed to be a monster technique, but now that I am specializing in cryptids, the new one will be a Mongolian death worm, but it will have a similar concept. Yeah. I like Alan yourself. helped us name our haunt Blood Moon Manor, but of course we had a huge old house on the property. Says, Hello. anybody to be scared. Um, the, the whole point of awesome monsters is to make awesome heroes. Um, if, you, if you look at any comic book hero worth their salt, they get that way because of their villains. Uh, Batman is awesome because he has a great rogues gallery that he fights against. And a lot of them are kind of monstrous. Uh, the same is true with Spider-Man. Um, and Superman, you know, slightly is lacking uh, because he just doesn't have the same rogues gallery that uh, some other characters have. So, you know, you're, a hero is only as strong as their villains. And the, 
the villain is there to be a, a contrast and a comparison to the hero. Great philosophy, Professor Allen uh, says, monsters are people too. Subcultures are terrifying at first glance. And I love poltergeist, haunt hopping of Alan Hobbs. Uh, Justin Rudy, how much screen time does Freddy Krueger get in the first A Nightmare on Elm Street? Seven minutes, 14 minutes, three and a half minutes, or 21 minutes? I would say three and a half minutes. Uh, honestly, he's not in that a lot. Um, it might be it might be seven, but uh, one of the things that I love about that movie is you don't see him, uh, and he's scary because you barely see him. Like you don't know what his face looks like. And then in part two, he's popping one-liners and he's in full view all the time. It's just not as strong, not as solid. Sparrow's Cave says I just saw the Giving Tree horror movie. I have to say I was very impressed with how it turned out. I'll have to look it up. Uh, where can I see it? Mike Murphy says monsters have interesting lives. They do. I say that every time I'm making monster hands. Justin Rudy says seven minutes is correct. Yeah. I mean, that alley scene alone where he's walking down the alley and his arms extend and he's rubbing his claws on the wall, um, that's probably a 30 or 45 second scene. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What you think, Stan? Who said that? Madeline. Thanks, uh, Madeline. From, who, was, who joined us from Probovid. Ezekiel says, I thought science was a great movie until they showed the alien and it lost me. Really? My wife was terrified. I was terrified of it, Murphy. It was, movie? it just built signs. up. Signs. Oh, it was fun. But it was fun. It was so much fun. Do you remember Nightmare on Elm Street, the series? Which one? No. Uh, yes, I do. I do. Freddy's Nightmares. It was good. This mask looks like it could easily be used as a prop as well. Not a prop head, but as a worm coming out of anything. Yeah. Take this camera and show them. That's gonna look great. He looks great. Yeah, it's not painted yet, but it's it's built and it's black. <laughs> black is beautiful. What? What? Just pick up, pick up, pick up the around. We're on the one that's facing the mountain, so you can look at it. Well, I'll so move here this. Here is one. our uh, where we are with Mora. Here's our helmet. We spent uh, we did this today. So it's a. Uh, you said we. That was mostly you. Alan Kelton song. The, uh, so it's all EVA, and uh, we have our cool little, uh, got our nose guard, got our snakes. We uh, put it together. We uh, put it together, and uh, we put, I put a couple of coats of Flex Seal on it, and snakes are, they've got scales. So we didn't do flex seal on those because we want to keep the texture and be able to see it. Uh, they did get a coat of uh, black spray paint, and the next step will be to uh, paint it up. It's pretty simple. It's uh, like a gold and a little red, and uh, that's kind of it. It's ready to go. So, one more hat. It's not a hat, Stan. It's a helmet. It's a helmet. Cobwebs is going to be a happy camper. Nice. It's it's an amalgamim amalgamim amalgamim. It's a mixture of uh, a lot of you know. Every artist kind of draws Mumra's helmet a little bit different. 
just a movie says, okay, I have to be honest here. I use the internet for all of those. I re enjoy regular rapid fire questions much more. This was rough. I thought I would try something different. <laughs> so next time, back to regular rapid fire questions. Hooray. So nice. Good job. Awesome. Good job, Stan. Good job, Stan. Uh, Rass, rub, and buff for the metallics. Uh, I got to look at the helmet, but it's actually more of a maroon color. So it's it's actually not even um, metallic looking. <laughs> it depends on what you what your reference picture looks at. Are they all? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. turned out great. I'm gonna veer towards the cartoon. That turned out nice. It's not a hat stand. The headpiece is looking amazing. Great work, Thundercats. Ezekiel oh. Says, says that will go good with your sandals and socks. That's right. Not wearing sandals, That's Ezekiel. Right. Or at the Ren Fair with your Metallica t-shirt, cape, and samurai sword. Oh, yeah. I would not give up my cape. This is what I would wear <laughs> for Ezekiel. <laughs> Shut up. This is it. This is the outfit. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, sure. Dude, this is the whole outfit. Ezekiel, I would wear this for you, bro. Oh, I take all the pictures with all, with all the Instagram people. All right. Let's see it. Walk up a little closer there so they can see you. You're not on yet. There you are. Hey. Hey. <laughs> it's a branded shirt. There you go. <laughs> That's how we'll make our millions. I'm going to wear this with socks on. Sock on! Okay, we're at 9.47. I've got just about 15 minutes, and I think I can get this guy pretty much dialed in by then. Sarlacc. <laughs> Sarlacc mask is awesome. It is very Sarlacc. It does look very Sarlacc. <coughs> Yes. Angel Martinez says, at first I thought he was wearing Mickey Mouse ears. <coughs> Mickey Mouse ears. Is Mumbron's whole body blue? Yes. Well, I don't know if like the curtains match drapes or anything, but everything that we see in the cartoon is blue. Yeah, like I, I like, I know. I don't know about everything. Could have a rocket situation happening. Stop. What? Just answer the questions, wife. Streaming you on the big TV, you're living large. Uh, the way you have molded has given the mouth a grimacing feel to it. Yeah. I almost want it to feel like the mouth can kind of shoot forward a little bit. Like a goblin shark. Terrifying. See, we're kicking it back to Shark Week. See how that works? Yeah, the goblin shark has a mouth that like shoots forward to catch prey. Really cool stuff. Say red rocket situation, and your kids get the jokes. That's not my fault. Yep, it's terrifying. <coughs> Who wins in a fight, Mabra or Skeletor? Oh, oh, uh, see, that's actually kind of tough. Um, now, see, if it's a physical fight, I think it's going to be Mumbra. If it is a long-term strategy issue. I'm going to give it to Skeletor. So, uh, I think in that situation, Mumra is Superman and Skeletor is Batman. Mumra is Superman. 
Omra does scheme in a similar fashion to Skeletor, but he also relies on his monstrous form that he can change into to be a physical threat. And the Skeletor doesn't have that physical threat. I don't know if it's supposed to be there, but it looks like the tooth at the top left has a crack on the inside. Uh, probably just a line or a little bit of ink left over from the last time I used the teeth. That's possible. You're at 10 minutes to 10. Yeah. playing with the figures. <laughs> yeah, and when in my world, all right, so I had like a mo whole monster nation with my mm. action, all my action figures. Mm. And I, uh, it was Jabba the Hutt was like the boss. He was in charge. And then Beast Man had the power sword. Skeletor did like library work for them. You know, like research. That's important. <clears throat> Him and the guy whose name I can never remember from Star Wars, who has like the one horn that does this and the other horn does this. Jabba's advisor. The first Fortuna. Big Fortuna. Fortuna. Yes, that's him. Big Fortuna. What? What? Was that the wife who was? Yeah. Oh, Did you, I have a yeah, you, what? you you know your Star Wars. What? What? Alright, so the next thing oh. I'm gonna do on the mail. Let's, 1980 says there's a crossover of He-Man and Thundercats. Yes, there is. I might have. Huh. I have a whole little compartment full of different ball styluses. And I'm going to pull out a ball stylus. And I'm going to texture up these gums. I often use ball styluses to texture gums so that it'll hold paint when I dry brush. So while I'm working in this sculpture stage, <laughs> I am thinking about the paint. Alexa, countdown, five minutes. It's amazing how the core wax moves out the clay. Yeah, it does a good job. It also helps keep it from drying out. Uh, no, I have a full one somewhere. Okay. Alan, I've never seen a mask like this when you're molding. I think it was great. Thanks. Uh, Jabba was killed by a five foot one princess, so he's kind of useless. Uh, well, there is that. Lisa Gordon, Aaron says, Alan, you and Shannon are awesome haunted. Actually, the flesh is flesh, and uh, there'll be a ring of gum color here, and he wants everything in the middle black. I am going to try and, and get my plant creature back out of this that I haven't uh, done in a while. So. stylus is just putting a bunch of facets on these teeth, on the gums I should say. And when I dry brush, that's going to... Can you show that tool a little closer to the camera? So can see it. It's just a metal ball on the end of a rod. So there's wrinkles. 
those turned out awesome. Yeah, thank you. That is um, trenching, is that technique of making the wrinkles. The wrinkling. And it's honestly, it's that it's that V-shaped tool that I use that you can make yourself out of a tongue depressor. A popsicle stick is fine for narrower uh, wrinkles, but for the big ones, I really like the tongue depressors. Um, yeah. Is this a commission piece? It is. Yes, it is. I can just imagine the glycerin dribbling, falling from this guy's gums. Yeah. yeah. probably go with the ferns again. They give the best movement and because they are a series of triangles, they're one of the scariest leaves. Rounded leaves are less scary than angled leaves. And this is a smaller circle, so it's putting even more detail in. Sandals that Socks he drew. Sandals. Oh, Masato, you were fun. Uh, Misty Jedrowski says, Hubby calls me Hot Wife on Facebook, and a friend of his saw me at a yard sale and said, Hi, Hot Wife. When his <laughs> wife realized he wasn't referring to her, she smacked him. He explained things. It was okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I said it. Uh, Sparrow's Cave, you should do an Audrey 2 mask. Like, love little shop of heart. Yeah, uh, that's a possibility one day. The way the lip looks and all the wrinkles, this really reminds me of blood worms. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually pretty happy with this. Can you point at where an eye will be? Oh, well, I mean, what's funny is the eyes are in it. Like, I haven't even hidden the eyes. Um, Jacob, am I doing okay here? Point it down a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Right there is the eye. It's right there. It's right there. Alexa, stop. Those are the eyes. They're completely visible. So, but people's eyes stop at that first row of teeth. So I said I had to have the socks and sandals. Good night, Horror Beauty. Just a Good night. Most makers charge more for commission pieces. I'm assuming it depends on what it is, but can you give a ballpark on one? Though messaging is fine if you don't like talking prices on live stream. I, I talk price. I'm fine. Um, Two fifty for a half mask, uh, a half mask custom sculpt. Uh, I'm normally at two two hundred and fifty. Now that might go up a little bit if it's something that will be a half mask, but is going to be massive, weird, or have a moving jaw because that means two molds. You know, there, there's, there are factors to it, but in general, a half mass like this, I would be in the 250 price range. So I have to sculpt it, I gotta mold it. And um, that is if I get to use the mold for other things. Now, I won't make one exactly like I made for them and sell it, I won't do that. But I might make a different version of it for myself and, and add it to my line. Uh, if they want to pay 450, then they have exclusive rights to it, and uh, I won't sell it to anybody else. Cameron Steinblatt, hi. I made a Halloween YouTube channel. I'll get back on the, on the live on that channel. Cool. Well, we're gonna go sign off here pretty soon. Uh, it's getting late. It is just now 10 o'clock. I'm cleaning up my sculpture so you guys can kind of get a last look at it on the board. 
Um, Will this have any kind of a top? Uh, I don't think so. At least right now it doesn't. Doesn't mean it can't in the future. Okay, so let's back up here, take off those glasses, because they hurt. And this is the sculpture that I have worked on tonight. Let's look at the hard profile of it. That's the hard profile. This is amazing. It makes me want to sculpt despite, despite my lack of funds. Uh, sculpting is not expensive. Molding and casting can get expensive. But sculpting, I mean, you can sculpt in your mashed potatoes every night before you eat them. Don't get hung up on a medium. You want to make something awesome, you can make it out of paper mache. You know, don't, don't get hung up because you don't have the right things. Um, nothing should stop you from creating. Just do it. When will you be live again? What, what's today? Today's Wednesday. I will not be live tomorrow. Tomorrow is Thursday. I have Thursday off. And then I'll be live again Friday. But I might be live in the afternoon tomorrow. Do you want to tell them what you're doing tomorrow? Um, what you're working on? It's not a secret. But I haven't like mentioned the DVD, so I have. You mentioned all of the interview with Spencer Terry. Oh, so tomorrow I'm shooting uh, some <laughs> for a DVD that I'm working on for haunted houses, um, and just some of the changes that might how we could be effective scaring in a post-COVID world. Because things change, um, and there's there's going to be a lot of things that have changed for us. And this is just going to be getting, um, you know, uh, change. And how to account for those things and how to still have an effective show. Because if haunted house actors are not retrained, then they're going to get a little bit depressed because they have a different reward system. Right now the reward system is seeing the guests get scared right up close. Uh, and that's going to have to change a little bit to find another way to reward themselves. And then... Um, we also have to change how we interact a little because we're used to being able to charge and invade that personal space. And if we're staying six feet away, then that's going to change. So, um, yeah, I'm just working on some tactics and things for people for that. But anyway, um, you guys are awesome. What camera am I looking at, Jacob? This okay. one? All right. Hooray. All right. So you guys are awesome. Thank you very much for hanging out with us tonight. Oh, and Jacob, like, this is important. When I say, go make, mm, all right, when I say that, like, that's the end, okay? So you gotta be ready to hit the cancel button. I don't wanna say it and then be like, mm, uh, mm, we're still here. Uh, <laughs> are you ready to close it out? OBS will do its best. Wife, say goodnight. Good night. Say goodnight, wife. Good night. Uh, Stan, say goodnight. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Say good night to Stan Socks and Sandals. Oh. <laughs> uh, um, newbie webcaster guy. Good say good night. Good night, okay. newbie webcaster guy. Good Yeah. And then uh, I say good night, and I also say.